up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold penny i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 volkswagen atlas courtesy of faulkner volkswagen in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so today we are in this one because there is new standard equipment there is a new look for 2024 there's a new upgraded interior there's new tech I could really go on and on. A lot about this thing is new for 2024. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 atlas first one being the se starting at thirty seven thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars then there's the se with technology which is the one we are actually in today starting at forty one thousand six sixty five sel for forty eight thousand four forty five and lastly the sel premium r line for fifty two thousand four hundred fifty five dollars now the last two trim levels there that does come standard with all-wheel drive but for the first two trim levels like the one that we have today if you wanted to add all-wheel drive you can do that simply add nineteen hundred dollars otherwise the front wheel drive is going to come standard but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on this thing is going to be the same powering the beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 269 horsepower at 5500 rpm 273 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 times should come in at approximately seven seconds flat top speed if you're interested 120 miles per hour there with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 27 on the highway for the front wheel drive 19 in the city 25 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive but so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right got it in first gear in three two one go not bad actually not bad paddle shifters are pretty darn quick now i will say they are kind of small and they are plastic so i wouldn't have minded if they kind of upgraded the style of them but having said that i honestly think not too many people are going to be using the paddle shifters in a vehicle like the atlas anyways but i do love that they're there nonetheless because you can actually use them for a little bit of engine braking when it's snowing out so for example if you're going down a hill and it's a little bit snowy rather than hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the hill you could simply do a little bit of downshifting let the engine do a little bit of the braking so you're less likely to actually slide off the road so for that reason i like that they're there and they are actually pretty darn quick i just wish they were a little uh little fancier i guess i don't know but anyways now having got that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's really put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 volkswagen atlas here up to speed all right we're gonna do this from a standstill so three two one go it's not bad yeah it's not bad honestly there was a little bit of turbo lag at the get-go but um I, I remember driving the atlas previously it's kind of known for that and it's still there unfortunately but it's not bad definitely not going to have any issues merging onto the highway plenty of quickness once you get past up maybe 2000 rpm or something like that so definitely not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway having said that maybe a mild hybrid system would do some good in this thing that kind of eliminates that turbo lag typically and it's also going to give you a little better mpgs i'm not sure how much that would add to the cost of this thing but still that may be something that volkswagen might want to consider in the future but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so as expected you will find four wheel disc brakes coming standard now i will say in the past i remember the braking being really really bad in the atlas and uh now it feels fine actually i gotta be honest it feels a heck of a lot better than it used to so i don't know what they did there but in terms of braking feel it feels as it should feel now it's not the firmest braking feel you wouldn't expect that in the atlas in a large three row suv but it's not a super soft braking feel like it used to be either so i'll put it that way so it is acceptable i certainly don't mind it but anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes 
That's been excellent. I've had no issues with rag quality whatsoever. Definitely absorbing Pennsylvania's rotor perfections quite nicely. So I love the rag quality in this thing. Definitely not gonna have any issues with going on a long road trip to Ocean City, Maryland or something like that. Not that everybody in the world is going there, I'm just saying. But anyways, in terms of steering feel, it's definitely on the looser side of things. It is very loosey-goosey. Wouldn't have minded if uh, they firmed up that steering feel a little bit, but it's to be expected in a large three-row SUV, I suppose. But then touching on uh, cabin noise, that's been excellent as well. So I'm going around 35 miles per hour right now, and uh, literally, I'm getting nothing. There's no wind noise coming into the cabin. There's not really any road noise either, so that is excellent. It kind of has a very serene cabin on the inside here, so no issues there. Touching on visibility, I got the third row up right now, and those third row headrests are absolutely gigantic. So I would say if you don't have any passengers in the third row, simply fold those down and that should be perfectly fine. Otherwise, that is gonna eat up a good bit of your view out of the rear view mirror there. But rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard for all trim levels across the board, helping with forward visibility. And if you wanted a head up display, simply go with one of those SEL trim levels. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Volkswagen Atlas. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Volkswagen Atlas, completely refreshed for 2024. But before we get into it, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number one, indicating that the Atlas is built and assembled here in the US for US customers, so I like that. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. There is a revised front grille, of course, for the 2024 model year. You will get an integrated light bar if you go with the SE with technology trim level and up, so that is what I'm gonna show you guys here. Illuminated front and rear Volkswagen logos as well, again, with the SE with technology and up. I love that. LED headlights to the sides with LED daytime running lights do come standard on every single trim level across the board. You're also, though, going to get an adaptive front lighting system for all trim levels as well so what that is is when you're going around a bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so it's going to add better visibility at night for sure so i love that every single trim level gets that typically that's something you find in luxury vehicles so very rarely on non-luxury brands will you find that so i'm a big fan of that but automatic feature coming with the headlights as well along with automatic high beams if you go with the SEL trim level and up for those automatic high beams. So what that is, is when you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim that back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you. So very convenient feature there. And there is a unique front bumper if you were to go with that R-line trim level only. The other trims are all going to look the same basically. But that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Atlas, roof rails do come standard on all trim levels across the board. Chrome belt line molding coming with the SE trim levels, but chrome window surrounds then coming with the SEL trim levels. Body color power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals then as well. You're gonna get some matte black side skirts like you guys are looking at for all trim levels essentially, but the R line if you go with that R-line trim level, this will turn into body colored side skirt. So that is the look that I personally prefer. But having said that, most three row SUVs do get the matte black side skirts, I will say that. But then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch alloys for the SE trim level, 20 inch alloys for the SE with technology and SEL trims. That's what you guys are looking at. And if you were to go with that R-line, that top trim level, you're gonna get 21 inch alloys. But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, yet again, things have been switched up slightly for 2024. You do have a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light that does come standard, rear window wiper as well. LED taillights do come standard as well. And again, that's been redesigned. I like the Atlas badging spelled out horizontally and that is highlighted by that chroma chrome accent piece just underneath the taillights there. Now, the next thing is I wanted to mention, the Volkswagen always does this and Audi actually does this as well, but they always tend to try to fake you out with uh, imitating exhaust outlets. So although it looks like there are chrome exhaust outlets integrated into the rear bumper, they are actually filled with plastic. So just underneath, if you guys can see that there are actually dual exhaust outlets, but they are actually tucked away. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. Right, 
so but now since we are around to the back of this one when it comes to opening that rear tailgate it is a hands-free power tailgate if you go with the se with technology trim level end up that's how you're going to go ahead and get that but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 20.6 cubic feet behind that third row if that was not enough space of course the third row does fold down bumping that up to 55.5 cubic feet then with all rows folded that is going to come in at 96.6 cubic feet then but ultimately there is a 60 40 split there's a 12 volt power outlet back in that cargo area as well there are some grocery bag hooks there's led cargo lighting i love seeing that little bit of storage to the side there and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will actually find a little bit of in-floor storage but also a spare tire then as well but then let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom that's going to come in at 33.7 inches which is actually pretty darn impressive for a third row for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there i was actually able to fit so that is pretty darn cool in terms of rear ventilation yes the third row does get it however it's not located on the ceiling like you typically would find in other suvs it's actually located just kind of by the rear windows on the side of everything so that's where you're going to find that which is perfectly fine at least they got it but then make your way up to the second row legroom that comes in at 37.6 inches for reference i mean even six feet tall that's how much space i have back there again rear ventilation does come standard it's going to be located in front of them there are some phone charging ports back there as well well, there's actually a 115 volt power outlet that I found back there. So that was pretty darn cool. And I was definitely a big fan of the rear window sunshades back there. And by the way, that comes with the SE with technology trim leveling up if you wanted those. And if you wanted to spoil those second row passengers with heated second row seats, go with the SEL trim level and up. That's how you're going to go ahead and get that. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Power adjustable driver's seat does come standard. Heated front seats actually do come standard for all trim levels. Ventilated front seats do come standard for all trim levels as well. That's typically an option with Mercedes and BMW, but you get it standard here on the Atlas. So love that. Leatherette seating is going to come standard. Leather seating is going to come on the SEL trim level end up overall seating was plenty comfortable i personally didn't have any issues in my short little test drive here today at least so no issues there let's take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leatherette wrapped for all trim levels but the r line the r line trim is going to give you a leather wrapped steering wheel and it's kind of a flat bottom as well so i was a big fan of that and actually i see a heated steering wheel button on there so that is going to be available apparently as well so i like that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key here got your volts Volkswagen logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate there the times two button that's going to be a remote start and that comes with the se with technology trim level end up but ultimately it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just in front of the shifter and by the way this is a kind of different shifter than most other brands out there so i'm going to cover this real quick to put it in reverse you push it up to put it in drive you pull it back and then to put it in park you just press down on the p button just in front of it so in case you were curious about that but anyways once started up there is a very nice looking 10.3 inch digital gauge cluster that comes standard for every single trim level across the board and i absolutely freaking love it volkswagen and audi always do an amazing job with their gauge clusters let me just say that so there are steering wheel mounted controls that allow you to completely adjust what is displayed up there of course there is actually a view button on the steering wheel that completely changes the loadout of those gauges so it gives you a couple different views a couple different displays that you can choose to display up there if you wanted to so i'm a big fan of that of course it gives you your outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty and pretty much everything you could possibly want up there but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality there is a wireless phone charger that comes standard for all trim levels across the board love that auto dim your rear view mirror also standard for all trim levels dual zoom climate control all trims are going to get that so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures multi-color ambient lighting coming with the sel trim level and up so fortunately we don't have that with us here today stainless steel pedals for the r-line trim level there's going to be a panoramic moonroof for the sel trim level and up but it is available for the se with technology for 1200 dollars. that's how we have it and yes it goes all the way into the back it is a massive panoramic moonroof so big fan of that but i gotta say i think my favorite thing about the interior quality of the atlas here is this wood trim and i don't i don't know if it's real wood but it looks dang good and the best part about this wood trim is it surrounds the gauge cluster i love that part typically other manufacturers will stop it at the infotainment screen and continue it onto the doors 
but in the case of Volkswagen, it surrounds the actual digital gauge cluster. And I think for that reason, it looks so dang good. It looks so high end because of that, because most manufacturers will not do that for whatever reason. So well done Volkswagen. That was well thought out. I really like that. But anyways, just in front of the uh, cup holders here, you got wireless phone charger. Like I said, a little bit of rubberized storage. You do have cup holders just to the right of that uh, shifter and start button. Behind the cup holders, you got a little bit of storage within the center armrest, a massive amount of storage in there. Another phone charging port too. Another really cool feature about the Atlas though is just underneath, of that uh, shifter and engine start button, you do have some hidden storage, somewhat hidden storage. So. so you could probably put your purse there or anything else that you kind of want to kind of keep out of sight. So I was a big fan of that too. I kind of like the material used on the doors. There's some contrast stitching. Really, this is a very high end interior quality. I gotta be honest. So I'm a huge fan of the interior quality on the Atlas here without a doubt. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. There's a 12 inch color touchscreen display that does come standard and yes, it is new for 2024, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, so I love it. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. If you wanted a factory navigation system, you can get it. Just go with the SEL trim level and up. And overall, it's basically set up just like your cell phone would be set up. It's extremely easy to use. And another thing, when it comes to the tech, I noticed something that Volkswagen is doing in the Atlas that Volvo has done for a while now. Maybe they took it off of Volvo, but to open and close the panoramic moonroof, you simply just slide your finger back to open it and slide it forward to close it that's really cool but then the interior lighting up front at least here you just simply touch on the lighting itself there's literally no button you just touch on the cover for the lighting and it's going to turn on and off for you so that's another thing that volvo does and i haven't seen it on any other manufacturers yet and i always really liked it but now volkswagen is doing it in the atlas as well so i'm a huge fan of that well done volkswagen yet again so anyways a lot of fun tech and speaking of let's continue on to the sound system i got sidetracked there six speakers are going to come standard on all trim levels but the r line that r line is going to give you a harman kardon sound system so Having said that, we do got the six speaker with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. I show a lot more bass than I expected for a six speaker sound system, I gotta be honest. So didn't sound that bad. I will say not a ton of clarity compared to the upgraded sound systems that I typically test, but it'll certainly get the job done for what this vehicle is. I'll just put it that way. But anyways, last thing I wanna to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, of course, is when you do put the Atlas in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not the very most high quality rear view camera out there. And for some reason it keeps blinking on me. I don't know what's going on with it right now, but nonetheless, that is gonna let you know what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking, lane change assist, rear cross traffic alert, and if you were to go with that SE WIC technology trim level and up, you're also going to get front and rear parking sensors. So that is pretty cool. But anyways, Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Atlas, a very nice refresh inside and out. So in my opinion, it's just been slightly refreshed on the exterior, but the interior is definitely massively refreshed and I love it. I love this wood trim that surrounds the gauges, like I said. I think it looks so high quality. I love the way you open and close the moonroof too and the just touch screen interior lighting, whatever you wanna call it. And quite honestly, there is a ton of space in this thing. So 96 cubic feet in a three row SUV that is taking it above and beyond. And yes, that's more than the Telluride. That's more than the Palisade. That's more than a Pilot. That's more than a Highlander. But that's not really what this vehicle competes with. So there's essentially three of them that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, the top three, I would say, would be the Volkswagen Atlas for this size SUV. You got the Chevy Traverse and you got the new Toyota Grand Highlander. Having said that, let me know which one of those you guys would pick in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on this channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold Country.